Good morning from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. You're looking live at Launch Complex 39A from our camera site here at the Kennedy Space Center press site. We're less than four hours away from the scheduled launch of the Crew-5 mission carrying the next team of astronauts and a cosmonaut to the International Space Station. Liftoff is scheduled for 12 p.m. Eastern Time, or 1600 UTC, aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and the Dragon Endurance spacecraft. Here's a nice up-close shot of that vehicle vertical on pad 39A. In the next hour, we expect to see the astronauts and uh, cosmonaut on this mission walk out of their crew quarters and begin the journey uh, by road to pad 39A where they will board the Dragon spacecraft uh, for the final couple of hours of the countdown, again culminating in liftoff to begin a trip to the International Space Station at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, or 1600 UTC. This mission is known as Crew-5. It's the fifth operational crew rotation flight by SpaceX under a uh, multi-billion dollar contract with NASA. And it's the eighth human space flight mission overall by SpaceX. That includes uh, two additional all-private crew missions, as well as the NASA demonstration flight uh, with two astronauts on board back in 2020, uh, which ended a, a nine-year gap of U.S. orbital human space flight capability. So two and a half years later, uh, this will be the eighth flight that SpaceX has launched with astronauts on board since that historic Demo-2 mission on the Dragon spacecraft with astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken back on May the 30th of 2020. This crew heading to space today is a multinational crew with the two U.S. astronauts on board, a Japanese astronaut as well as a Russian cosmonaut. This uh, continues a very, very busy week of launch activity in the U.S. space industry. This is the second of as many as uh, five launches by U.S. launch companies this week. Actually, as many as five launches in as, in as few as two and a half or three days or so. Uh, yesterday, we saw United Launch Alliance uh, launch an Atlas V rocket a few miles to the south of Pad 39A with two commercial communications satellites. That launch was declared successful shortly before midnight last night after a six-hour climb uh, to geosynchronous orbit. And uh, just about 18 hours later, uh, we're going to see the launch, hopefully, of SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon 9 rocket from Pad 39A here at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. If this launch goes on time, uh, SpaceX is preparing to launch a different Falcon 9 rocket from the West Coast from out at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California this evening at 7.10 p.m. Eastern Time or 4.10 p.m. Pacific Time. That's just about seven hours after this crew launch is scheduled to go. Uh, SpaceX is going to try to launch a Falcon 9 from California with uh, the next batch of Starlink Internet satellites. And then tomorrow there are two more launches on tap. Uh, one by Rocket Lab from uh, down in New Zealand. However, we're going to count that as a U.S. launch because it is a U.S. domiciled company. And uh, much of the uh, fabrication and manufacturing of that rocket occurs in California. Also tomorrow, SpaceX is scheduled to launch another Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station with two commercial communications satellites for Intelsat. So a very busy couple of days in the U.S. launch business here. I uh, haven't had a chance to go and look at the records, but it may be unprecedented in terms of the number of launches, number of space launches uh, by U.S. rockets in such a short span of time. But today, the focus is the Crew Dragon flight to the space station, now three hours, 55 minutes away. The latest weather forecast showed a better than 90% chance of acceptable conditions here at the launch site to enable the Falcon 9 to safely get off the ground today. So nearly ideal conditions here uh, with calm winds currently at the Kennedy Space Center. The flagpole here at the press site is, uh, is uh, the flag is not blowing in any breeze. It's uh, quite a serene morning here with just a few scattered clouds over the spaceport. And we expect the winds to pick up a little bit later in the day uh, the forecast calls for 10 to 15 mile per hour winds at launch time. 
The only issue of note uh, that we're aware of right now is the weather in the downrange uh, ascent corridor heading northeast from Kennedy Space Center. That's the zone in the Atlantic Ocean. It's uh, off the east coast of the United States as well as across the North Atlantic stretching all the way to uh, off the coast of Ireland where the Dragon capsule uh, might have to splash down under parachutes in the event of an in-flight abort. SpaceX and NASA officials uh, carefully monitor the sea states and uh, winds along that corridor uh, for every crew launch just to make sure those are acceptable for a safe splashdown in the event of an unlikely abort uh, after liftoff. The remnants of uh, former Hurricane Ian are currently spinning uh, off the northeastern United States, and that's bringing some high winds and uh, high swells to the Atlantic Ocean. But uh, NASA and SpaceX officials met earlier this morning and determined that the conditions are acceptable at least uh, good enough to continue the launch preparations there. There may be another review of that offshore weather uh, later before the 12 p.m. Eastern Time launch opportunity today. But right now there's uh, hope and optimism that the conditions will be acceptable to allow uh, the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon spacecraft to get off the ground today. The launch doesn't happen today. SpaceX and NASA have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 11.38 a.m. Eastern Time. For those of you who are keeping track of exact launch times, the latest information we have indicates the target T0 or launch time today for Crew 5 for this crew mission is 12 p.m. Eastern Time and 57 seconds. So 12 o'clock and 57 seconds Eastern Daylight Time. That is 1657. UTC.
If you're just joining us, I'm Stephen Clark reporting live from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And if you haven't had a chance to do so, please hit the like button on our YouTube stream. This helps us gain a bigger audience for our coverage. We'll be live throughout the morning here from Kennedy Space Center, culminating in the liftoff of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon spacecraft set for 12 p.m. noon Eastern Time, or 1600 UTC.
We're bringing you views from uh, various different uh, NASA cameras now. Uh, these views are being provided to us from uh, NASA's Kennedy Space Center communications team. This view comes from the VAB roof, now a view from uh, one of uh, SpaceX's cameras out at pad 39A looking at the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon spacecraft. NASA is now feeding a replay from the crew suit up activity earlier this morning. Uh, we weren't able to see this live uh, due to a NASA decision. We're not sure why, uh, but uh, they're now feeding us a replay of the crew suit up this morning as the astronauts and cosmonaut put on their SpaceX flight suits. See the countdown clock here at uh, Kennedy Space Center's press site is at T minus three hours and 22 minutes. Should be just a couple of minutes away from the expected walkout of the four person crew from the operations and checkout building here at Kennedy Space Center. And we hope to bring that to you live when it, when it occurs. Uh, the four person crew, uh, three astronauts, one cosmonaut will be taking a ride in Tesla Model X cars to pad 39A. It's about a 20 minute drive from the operations and checkout building to the launch complex area. Here comes the Crew-5 astronauts and cosmonaut, led by Commander Nicole Mann on the right, and the left is pilot Josh Cassida. On the far left here is Russian cosmonaut Anna Kikina, and on the right is Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata. Koichi Wakata is uh, set to launch on his fifth mission to space. The other three crew members are all space flight rookies.
After a quick photo op, they'll be going off to the right in this view toward their Tesla Model X uh, cars, and they'll get in those back seats to be uh, chauffeured out to the launch pad in preparation for liftoff. Launch three hours and 20 minutes away. They're getting an opportunity to greet their families here. In the background, you can see a few VIPs, including NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. There's also a gathering of news media here to uh, photograph the crew before they head off to the launch pad. This crew is set to begin an expedition, expedition in low Earth orbit on the International Space Station that is expected to last more than five months.
Four on countdown. T minus three hours and 15 minutes. Crew are beginning their transport from the ONC room to the pad right on schedule.
Core on countdown, T minus three hours. Crew have arrived at the pad on schedule.
All stations, core on countdown at T minus two hours and 44 minutes. Crew have begun ingressing Dragon.
Copy Dragon, stand by for umbilical comm check. CDR, PLT, MS1, MS2, comm check. Core, loud and clear. Umbilical comm check is complete. Stand by for ground station comm check. Dragon, SpaceX, comm check. Six, Dragon, loud and clear. Core, loud and clear. Ground station comm check is complete. Stand by for Tedris comm check. Dragon, SpaceX, comm check. SpaceX, Dragon, loud and clear. Core, loud and clear. 
Cedrus comm check is complete. Stand by for comm checks with DC, MD, and LD in the launch configuration. Dragon, DC on countdown one. Comm check. DC, Dragon, loud and clear. DC, loud and clear. Stand by for comm checks with MD. Dragon, MD on countdown one, comm check. MD, Dragon, loud and clear. MD, loud and clear, stand by for comm check over Dragon the ground. Dragon, MD, Dragon the ground, comm check. MD, Dragon, loud and clear. MD, loud and clear, stand by for comm checks with LD. Dragon, LD on countdown one, comm check. LD, Dragon, loud and clear. LD, loud and clear, stand by for comm check over Dragon to ground. Dragon, LD on Dragon to ground, comm check. LD, Dragon, loud and clear. And LD, loud and clear, let's go have some fun. Dragon, SpaceX, launch configuration comm checks are complete. Report when ready for seat rotation per section two of 4.100. Dragon, we are ready for section two and ready for seat rotation. Copy that, Dragon. We will report when initiating. Dragon six initiating. Dragon.
Dragon SpaceX. Seats are in the launch position. Dragon Dragon. Dragon, you are go for Section 3 suit leak check preparation. SpaceX, Dragon is a go for suit leak check preparation Section 3 4.100. Good read back. SpaceX Dragon, we have tear complete and complete with section three.
Copy that, Dragon. You are go for Section 4 suit leak check. Copy, Dragon is go for suit leak check, Section 4. And we show four good new checks. And copy that, Dragon. We saw the same. Stand by while we just confirm those results long term and then for uh, next actions. Dragon copies and stand by.
and Dragon SpaceX for suit leak checks. Go ahead, SpaceX. All right, Josh, we saw you come in a little bit lower than you did on dry dress, so just as a measure of precaution, we're going to have the closeout lead come in and just take a quick look and double check that everything is looking secure for zippers and umbilicals. How copy? We copy, and we were thinking the same. Thanks a lot. Good read. Dragon on Dragon Ground from C3. How do you hear? C3, I've got you five by five. How me? Got you the same. Thank you.
and Dragon SpaceX. We got a report from the closeout lead about verifying all the zippers and umbilicals. We're just chatting with a few more folks to see if there's any other actions we want to take at this time. We do have 15 minutes remaining in the margin here, so plenty of time. Okay, Dragon Southeast. Dragon SpaceX for suit leak checks. Go ahead, Mike. All right, Josh, that completes the troubleshooting actions we wanted to take. So we verified that your umbilical has been reseated and your zippers are closed. Given that, we are recommending that we are that we that you proceed back to section three of four dot one hundred and reperform the suit leak check preparation and suit leak checks. How copy? Okay, Dragon Copies, we're going to step into Section 3 of 4.100, and we'll let you know when we're ready to re-perform the suit leak checks. Good readback. Dragon. Chair uh, is complete at step 3.9. We are ready for the check. Copy that, Dragon. You are go for section 4 suit leak check. Dragon is go for suit leak check.
And copy that, Dragon. We saw the same with four suits all passing their leak checks, even though C3 is still in the same family. That is good verification of the integrity. So at this time, we are going to proceed with the count uh, and move into Section 5 uh, for side hatch closure and delay any other troubleshooting steps until we get on orbit. How copy? Okay, that's great news. Dragon copies, and we are going to continue into section 3 of 4.100. Sorry, section 5 of 4.100. Section 5. Good correction. We copy. Dragon, closeout team is taking final steps in preparation for side hatch closure. Stand by for transition to pad hatch closed. Ensure that all items are secure from now through launch. Dragon copies. All item, items are secure and we're standing by for pad hatch closed. Good words.
Dragon, we are commencing the health check for launch escape system. Expect a momentary flight computer state change followed by a transition back to pad hatch closed. Dragon copy, we'll be looking for it.
and Dragon SpaceX for side hatch leak checks. Go for Dragon. Okay, Josh, uh, we identified a uh, potential piece of FOD on the side hatch seal when we were inspecting everything, so the closeout team is proceeding to open the hatch to address that before closing and re-performing the leak check. For big picture awareness, we still have approximately uh, 12 minutes remaining in the margin for this timer to perform this action, so we'll, we'll be able to run through everything without uh, issue here. Okay, Dragon Copies will be opening up the side hatch and uh, taking a look at the pod. We've got 12 minutes of margin. Appreciate the heads up. Good read back. A few moments ago, we heard from SpaceX Mission Control and the crew operation responsible engineer, Michael Blasco, that the closeout team at the pad in the white room, which you're watching now, will have to reopen the side hatch on the Dragon spacecraft. They've identified a piece of potential foreign object debris. They'll have to inspect the uh, seals and remove that debris if it's there, and then close the hatch once more before proceeding into uh, the leak check for the entire Crew Dragon spacecraft which is one of their final tasks before securing the white room and evacuating the pad. SpaceX Mission Control reports the team has about 12 minutes of margin in their schedule to be able to complete this task and still uh, secure the white room and evacuate in advance of the start of propellant loading, which is due to begin at T minus 35 minutes, a little less than an hour from now. And that's uh, needed to start at that time in order to uh, have the Falcon 9 and Dragon ready for liftoff at 12 p.m. and 57 seconds Eastern Time, or 1657 UTC. Meanwhile, the weather conditions here at Kennedy Space Center are all favorable for launch at this time. All the weather parameters are currently green, and the latest update from the launch weather officer indicated a better than a better than 90 percent chance of favorable weather for launch today. The teams have been watching sea states and winds downrange in the Atlantic Ocean, heading off to the northeast from Kennedy Space Center. That's where the Dragon spacecraft would have to splash down under parachutes if uh, there is an in-flight abort. That's an unlikely occurrence, but SpaceX teams and NASA teams want to protect against that possibility and make sure the conditions in that downrange abort zone are favorable for a safe splashdown. They've been watching that uh, all week, uh, the remnants of Hurricane Ian uh, off the northeast coast of the United States have been kicking up waves and winds. But the uh, managers met this morning uh, around 6 a.m. Eastern time and uh, elected to go ahead and proceed with today's launch opportunity. Uh, they still have the option to obviously uh, call off the launch if the weather and sea states uh, make an unfavorable turn but right now 
Uh, no indication that that's an issue for an on-time launch today at 12 p.m. Eastern time. And Dragon, for a quick update, the closeout team was able to open the side hatch and remove the uh, hair that they identified as FOD. They've closed the, hide the side hatch and are stepping into their leak checks right now. We are right on schedule for launch today. Dragon copies, that's great news, and we're standing by for that leak check. Thank you. And Dragon, ground is going to be commencing a health check for launch escape system a second time. Expect a momentary flight computer state change, followed by that transition back to pad hatch closed. Dragon copies, we'll expect it again prior to going back to pad hatch closed. Good read back. Now T-minus one hour, 25 minutes, 42 seconds. If you've been listening to SpaceX communications uh, between the mission control team and the crew on board the spacecraft, you'll know that the closeout team has closed the hatch for a second time after removing a piece of hair that was found to be uh, foreign object debris around the hatch area. And with the hatch now closed, the closeout team is progressing with leak checks to ensure a good pressure seal on the Dragon Endurance spacecraft before it's uh, launched into orbit today from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, an hour and 25 minutes from now. And Dragon SpaceX for post-ingress briefing. Go ahead for Dragon. Okay, Duke. So good news all around, but the Dragon is looking happy and healthy with no further issues aside from the uh, re-performing the leak check here. Uh, you guys are all aware for our seat three and we're gonna delay any further steps until we get on orbit, but we're in a good state there. Other than that, Dragon and F9 are both looking healthy and the weather's looking good. 
Copy. The crew is good. We're standing by. And with that, please confirm when you are ready for comm checks with your Falcon 9 operators. Dragon, ready for comm checks with Falcon 9. SpaceX copy, stand by one. Dragon GNC on countdown one, comm check. GNC, your dragon has you loud and clear. GNC, loud and clear. Stand by for comm check by propulsion engineer. Dragon, prop on countdown one, comm check. Prop, dragon has you loud and clear. Prop, loud and clear. Stand by for comm check with the avionics engineer. Dragon Avionics on Countdown 1, comm check. Avionics, the Dragon, loud and clear. Avionics, loud and clear, stand by for comm check by ground segment engineer. Dragon, ground segment on Countdown 1, comm check. Ground segment, Dragon, has you loud and clear. Ground segment, loud and clear, stand by from comm check by launch control. Dragon, launch control on countdown one, comm check. Launch control, Dragon, loud and clear. Launch control, loud and clear. Stand by for comm check by the chief engineer. Dragon, CE on countdown one, comm check. CE, Dragon, loud and clear. CE, loud and clear. Also, this completes the Falcon 9 responsible engineer comm checks. If you're just joining us, you're looking at a live view inside SpaceX's white room where the SpaceX technicians clad in black are preparing to evacuate the pad after completing uh, leak checks on the Dragon spacecraft. Once those leak checks are complete, the crew will head back to a fallback position, a safe distance from the pad, before the start of propellant loading on board the vehicle, which is due to begin in about 45 minutes. And before that propellant loading, we'll see the crew access arm retract from uh, the Crew Dragon spacecraft back to its launch position. And then the uh, launch escape system will be armed uh, in advance of propellant loading. And that launch escape system would be automatically activated in the event of any major problem during propellant loading that uh, created a dangerous situation for the crew. Uh, the Crew Dragon spacecraft has Super Draco engines that would propel the capsule away from the rocket uh, to a splashdown just off the coast here, uh, off the coast of Kennedy Space Center in the event of a major issue during that final 35 minutes of the countdown. Those Super Draco engines would also be used to uh, perform an abort maneuver in flight uh, during the launch sequence if necessary. Everything looking good for an on-time launch today at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. The launch time is exactly set for 12 o'clock and 57 seconds Eastern time. That is uh, 1,657 seconds UTC. 
one hour, 19 minutes, 30 seconds from now. Here's a nice view of Launch Complex 39A from a camera on the roof of the vehicle assembly building. Off to the right, you can see some of the ongoing construction work for SpaceX's Starship orbital launch Dragon site SpaceX, here in Florida. We just had a good side hatch leak check. Dragon copy, that is great news. That was the voice of Michael Brasco, the crew operations responsible engineer communicating with the crew from SpaceX Mission Control in California. Good leak check confirmed on the Dragon spacecraft. That's another milestone in today's countdown. And in the next few minutes, we expect to see the closeout crew uh, finish their work inside the White Room. They'll break down some of their support equipment uh, to secure that for launch, and then they'll evacuate the launch pad. If you're just joining us and you haven't had a chance to do so, please hit the like button on our YouTube stream. That helps us gain a larger following for our coverage. We really would appreciate it if you can uh, click the like button here on YouTube. We also have our Space Flight Now store up and available for you to uh, look at. It's at shop.spaceflightnow.com. And on that store, you can purchase the Crew-5 mission patch, which you see here. So if you're a patch collector or want to uh, commemorate this launch, a good way to do it is by purchasing the mission patch, and we have that for sale in our Space Flight Now store at shop.spaceflightnow.com. Also, if you want to support our coverage and help us bring you uh, live events like this on YouTube, you can become a member of our YouTube channel. You can join at uh, various membership levels we have available for you to choose from, depending on which level or tier you select, you can gain access to bonus video features for members only. And uh, your contribution by joining our YouTube channel helps us continue our coverage. Another way to help support our coverage is the Super Chat function on YouTube as well. So if you want to contribute there, we would greatly appreciate it. It goes a long way to helping us continue to do what we do, bringing, bringing you live coverage of every uh, space launch from Florida Space Coast. And we also cover uh, launches uh, around the country and around the world on our uh, website at spaceflightnow.com. Everything looking good right now for this launch of the Crew-5 mission an hour and 16 minutes from now. Good weather here locally at Kennedy Space Center. No uh, major technical issues under discussion right now by SpaceX or NASA engineers. The four-person crew... Uh, two NASA astronauts, one Japanese astronaut, one Russian cosmonaut are all in their seats on SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft out on pad 39A.
minutes, one hour, eight minutes, 34 seconds. You're continuing to look at a live shot of a Launch Complex 39A here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where SpaceX's Dragon Endurance capsule is sitting on top of a Falcon 9 rocket preparing for launch uh, with four crew members heading to the International Space Station for a five-month science mission. Off the coast, you can see the Atlantic Ocean in the background. Uh, off to the right of the Falcon 9 rocket from this view is the Starship Orbital Launch Site under construction for SpaceX's next generation reusable super heavy booster and Starship rocket program. We saw the structural top out of that uh, launch tower gantry structure uh, a few weeks ago in September. However, uh, there's a lot more work that needs to be done, including outfitting of that tower and the uh, finishing of the construction of the launch mount itself uh, before any uh, testing of uh, Starship vehicles can get underway here at Kennedy Space Center. That's likely not to happen until sometime well into next year at the earliest. In the meantime, SpaceX continues flying uh, Falcon 9s off of Pad 39A for crew missions as well as occasional uh, cargo missions to the space station and sometimes Starlink missions uh, for SpaceX's uh, Starlink Internet Network. Some of those have launched off of Pad 39A to uh, take some of the load off of um, Pad 40, which is the most, most used launch pad that SpaceX currently operates uh, down at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Here's a shot inside the Crew Dragon spacecraft. You can see all four crew members uh, resting, relaxing, an hour and six, an hour and seven minutes until liftoff now. On the left-hand side of this view is uh, Russian cosmonaut Anna Kikina. Next to her is uh, NASA pilot Josh Cassida. And then uh, on the right side of this screen are uh, NASA commander Nicole Mann and JAXA Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata. Dragon SpaceX, the closeout team has departed the crew arm, and with that, ground is going to cycle the orbit tank isolation valves to equalize low flow pressure. Dragon
T minus one hour, one minute, 40 seconds until today's instantaneous launch opportunity at uh, Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The SpaceX closeout team has uh, evacuated the white room and the crew access arm and will soon leave the Launch Complex 39A area and move back to a safe fallback position. We might see those uh, Teslas that the crew rode out to the pad in uh, drive off the pad in the next few moments here as the closeout ground support team uh, again moves back to a, fa a safe fallback position in advance of propellant loading on the Falcon 9 rocket. The Crew-5 mission today is led by uh, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. She's a colonel in the United States Marine Corps and a former F-A-18 test pilot in the Marine Corps. She's uh, 45 years old, was born in California, and she's set to become the first Native American woman to fly in space. She'll also be the first woman to command a U.S. commercial, commercial crew spacecraft. This is her first uh, flight to space. She was selected as a NASA astronaut candidate in 2013 and was originally assigned to fly on the first crew flight of Boeing's Starliner crew spacecraft. But uh, the Starliner program by Boeing has ran into delays, and NASA reassigned some of those crew members to fly on Dragon missions with SpaceX to the space station uh, to enable them to get to space sooner. So Nicole Mann, a... Uh, Dragon, you are go for Section 6. When ready, report go for launch. Dragon copy. We're stepping into Section 6 of Ford Apollo 100, preparation for LES Army. Good readback. That was the uh, customary call out from SpaceX Mission Control at T-minus one hour, uh, telling the crew uh, to uh, report when they are ready and go for launch. So Nicole Mann, again, is uh, the commander of the Crew-5 mission, and she was selected as a NASA astronaut candidate in 2013 and is leading this four-person crew heading to space today. Josh Cassida is the pilot. He's also a first-time space flyer, also a member of the 2013 NASA astronaut class. He is 49 years old, was born in San Diego, but considers White Bear Lake, Minnesota, as his hometown. He is a former... He's a U.S. Navy captain and a former test pilot in the Navy. He flew P-3 and P-8 aircraft in the Navy. He's also a physicist. He has a Ph.D. in high-energy physics from the Physics University Dragon of Rochester. Dragon, section six, crew five is go for launch. That Copy the, that, Nicole. Crew five is go for launch. That was the voice of Nicole Mann. Uh, we just talked about her a moment ago. She's the commander of crew five, and she reports that the crew five Mission is go for launch from uh, the crew's perspective. Now 58 and a half minutes remaining until liftoff. The third crew member on board, Crew 5, is Mission Specialist Koichi Wakata. He is an astronaut uh, for the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. He was born in Saitama, Japan, and he's 59 years old. He is the only veteran crew member of this uh, Crew 5 mission. He has logged 347 days in space on four prior missions. He's launched on space shuttles and Russian Soyuz spacecraft. He's logged two long-duration flights on the International Space Station. So this will be his fifth flight to space and his third long-duration stint on the ISS. He first flew on uh, NASA's Space Shuttle Endeavor on the STS-72 mission back in 1996, so a 26-year flying career for Koichi Bukata in his astronaut career so far. He is an uh, aerospace engineer by training and trade. He has a master's degree in aerospace engineering. And he, again, is the only veteran crew member on Crew 5. Russian cosmonaut uh, Anna Kikina rounds out the crew. She is a first-time space flyer as well. And she is mission, mission specialist number two. She is heading uh, to the space station to help operate the Russian segment of the ISS. She is the first Russian cosmonaut to fly on a SpaceX crew capsule. She's also the first Russian cosmonaut to fly on any U.S. crew spacecraft since uh, a cosmonaut flew on a space shuttle back in 2002. She's 38 years old. She has a degree uh, from a maritime university, maritime engineering university in Russia, and she was selected as a 
uh, Rose Cosmos Cosmonaut in 2012 and then was assigned to Crew 5 last year to begin training for this mission, culminating in the launch today. On board the ISS, she'll be, again, operating parts of the Russian segment, controlling the European robotic arm. That's one of her main tasks on this mission. She'll be at the controls of that arm, uh, assisting other cosmonauts while they're outside the station on spacewalks. And uh, she's also the first Russian crew member to fly on a U.S. spacecraft since the recent signing and final uh, finalization of a, a so-called seat swap agreement between NASA and Roscosmos, the Russian space agency. And this enables Russian crew members to fly on U.S. spacecraft to the station and U.S. astronauts to fly on Russian Soyuz flights to and from the space station. This is a, a backstop, essentially, to help ensure that the space station always has at least one Russian cosmonaut and one NASA astronaut to help operate uh, each nation's respective systems on the ISS in the event of any major issue with either the Soyuz, the Dragon, or in the future the Starliner spacecraft is to ensure that there's always uh, a path to space station for a Russian cosmonaut and a NASA astronaut. So that's the introduction to the Crew-5 astronauts and the Russian cosmonaut heading to space today. They're all in their seats aboard SpaceX's Dragon Endurance spacecraft. The Dragon Endurance capsule is going to space for the second time. It previously flew to the ISS on the Crew-3 mission, which ended uh, back in early May with a splashdown off the coast of Florida. That spacecraft has been refurbished by SpaceX here at Cape Canaveral and is now on top of a Falcon 9 rocket again, ready for its second flight to space. The Falcon 9 booster on today's mission is uh, set for its first flight to space. This reusable rocket is uh, known as Booster 1077 in SpaceX's fleet and is a, a very pristine white. If you're used to watching SpaceX missions, you'll notice that soot and uh, dark uh, gray markings are visible on many of the Falcon 9 rockets after experiencing multiple launches and re-entries. Uh, but this is a pristine white booster flying for the first time, fresh from uh, SpaceX's rocket factory out in California. This booster was actually uh, damaged during transport from California to SpaceX's testing site in Central Texas. Uh, part of the first stage booster actually contacted a bridge during that transport operation over land. And uh, SpaceX replaced the interstage composite structure on top of the booster. That was the part that got dinged by that bridge. They also replaced a grid fin and an actuator for the grid fin, uh, which is used, those grid fins are used to help control and stabilize the booster during descent back into the atmosphere. SpaceX's drone ship is on station about 340 miles or 550 kilometers or so northeast of Kennedy Space Center. Uh, for landing of this booster. So SpaceX will uh, attempt to land this booster on the offshore drone ship, return it back to Port Canaveral for refurbishment for future flights. Now 53 minutes and 13 seconds until launch. We're now less than 20 minutes away from the start of propellant loading on the Falcon 9 rocket. We're now about 10 minutes or so away from when we expect to see the crew access arm retract away from the Dragon spacecraft.
T-minus 51 minutes and counting. No issues uh, have been reported at this point in the countdown by SpaceX. Everything looks good for liftoff of the Crew-5 mission at 12 noon Eastern time. T-minus 48 minutes and counting. Engine operators on countdown. Pulling is complete. The team has pulled go for crew access arm retract LES arm. Propellant load and launch. For all operators in MCCX and firing room four, both control rooms will go into lockdown at T minus 45 minutes and will remain in that state until launch skip system is disarmed. All operators are to remain at their console, and maintain a sterile cockpit until MD confirms successful disarming of the launch skip system following orbit insertion or propellant offload in the event of a scrub.
for non-urgent, no-go conditions, brief the CE or LD, and they will approve aborting the countdown. For urgent issues affecting the safety of the operation, operators shall call hold, hold, hold on the countdown net. Launch control will abort the launch auto sequence and immediately proceed into launch abort. At T minus 10 seconds, launch control will be hands off, relying on automated abort criteria for the remainder of the count. Operators advise the launch director whether structural breakup or fires imminent or occurring per Dragon manual escape flight rules. Launch control at this time you may proceed with arming the crew arm for movement. Launch control copies proceeding to arm crew arm for movement. Access arm retraction started. Refer the call from SpaceX Launch Control that the crew access arm is now retracting from the Dragon Endurance spacecraft. And the launch team has pulled go for propellant loading and launch of the Crew 5 mission aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Less than 45 minutes away now. Great view of that crew access arm moving back to its uh, launch position, rotating away from the Dragon spacecraft on top of the Falcon 9. Beautiful day for a launch here on Florida's Space Coast. We're about nine minutes away from the start of propellant loading. Once the crew access arm is back and confirmed in its uh, retracted position, the crew will be given the go to activate or arm, arm the uh, crew escape system on the Dragon spacecraft. These are the Super Draco thrusters that would be used to um, propel the spacecraft away from the rocket uh, in the event of any major problem during the final phase of the countdown as well as in flight. Crew access arm retraction complete. Now less than 42 minutes remaining until liftoff time. Here's a shot from a helicopter circling the Launch Complex 39A area. You can see some of the uh, marsh flats uh, full of water from the flooding rains that we received from Hurricane Ian last week. Those water levels are uh, much higher than normal out in those marshes and wetlands next to the pad. This launch was delayed a few days uh, after Work was suspended at Kennedy Space Center during the passage of the hurricane. 
It was actually a tropical storm when it uh, passed directly over the Space Center. Uh, but once the storm was clear, uh, work resumed on Saturday with the rollout of the Falcon 9 rocket to the pad. And the rocket was raised vertical in preparation for a test firing or static fire test on Sunday. All that is culminating with today's launch countdown. Dragon, you are go for section 7 of 4.100 to close visors and arm the launch escape system. SpaceX Dragon Copy stepping into section 7. All crew visors are closed. We are arming the launch escape system. SpaceX copies all. is MD on countdown one, launch escape system is verified armed. Falcon 9 tanks will be venting for the start of prop load. Expect loud venting. T minus 37 minutes, 7 seconds. We've heard confirmation that the Dragon spacecraft's launch escape system has been armed. And Nicole Mann, the Crew 5 mission commander, reports that the crew members have closed their spacesuit helmet visors. Now about two minutes away from the start of propellant loading on the Falcon 9 rocket. About a million pounds of uh, kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants will be loaded into the vehicle in the final 35 minutes of the countdown. The crew members who have flown on previous Falcon 9s have reported this uh, propellant loading process uh, does generate some uh, loud venting and sounds that are audible in the cockpit of the Dragon spacecraft. And the SpaceX Mission Control Team just uh, warned the crew to expect some of those noises and venting uh, as propellant loading gets underway momentarily here at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. 
SpaceX uh, loads propellant on the Falcon 9 with the crew members already on board the spacecraft. Uh, this is in contrast to uh, the way that uh, NASA has typically done this operation for crew missions with uh, loading propellants on the rocket before the crew boards the spacecraft. But uh, SpaceX uses densified or super chilled kerosene and liquid oxygen. And that liquid oxygen has a tendency to boil off in the warm Florida atmosphere and uh, warm up and uh, reach temperatures above optimum levels. Uh, and so, so SpaceX wants to load that propellant as late as possible in the countdown and basically just fill the tank up, top it off right before liftoff, before any of that uh, propellant has a chance to warm up or boil off. And to do that, they, they're not able to start loading propellant uh, until the final 35 minutes of the countdown. And we expect to hear that call in less than 15 seconds now that uh, propellant loading is underway. Propellant loading has started. And there's the call from SpaceX launch control. Propellant loading has started. So this process is now underway. Kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants are now flowing into the first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket out on pad 39A. And uh, kerosene fuel is also being loaded into the second stage. Uh, liquid oxygen loading on the stage two doesn't start until about T minus 16 minutes. Again, during this propellant loading process, the launch escape system on the Dragon spacecraft is armed. That would be activated if necessary to propel the spacecraft away from the rocket in the event of any major issues during, propel uh, during propellant loading. There are eight Super Draco thrusters on board the Dragon spacecraft to do that job if necessary. We're getting a really wonderful aerial views of Launch Complex 39A throughout this morning. Continuing to show the rocket standing vertical. It's about 215 feet tall or 65 meters in height in this configuration with the Dragon spacecraft on board. We've also been seeing nice views of uh, the Starship launch site under construction out at Pad 39A as well uh, for SpaceX's next generation uh, super heavy lift vehicle. You see a vessel lurking just offshore east of uh, launch pad 39A. This is likely a Coast Guard or security v uh, vessel uh, ensuring that the waters are clear of uh, all, un all unauthorized boats. Now about 33 minutes remaining until launch time. Really gorgeous shots here of pad 39A.
Stage one cryohelium loading has started. Cryogenic uh, helium pressurant is now flowing into the uh, high pressure bottles on the first stage. This is the uh, pressurant that's used to maintain uh, pressure in the propellant tanks on the first stage. During flight, uh, this helium pumps into those tanks to maintain pressure as propellants are consumed uh, after launch. We're now about 30 minutes away from liftoff of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket from Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Now about five minutes into the propellant loading process this morning. Liftoff remains set for 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 1600 or 4 p.m. UTC, less than 30 minutes away. T-minus 27 minutes and 12 seconds and counting. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket uh, with the Crew Dragon spacecraft with these uh, four crew members on board will be heading northeast from Kennedy Space Center on today's mission. This map uh, comes from NASA actually showing the uh, what's known as the Ascent Corridor heading northeast out over the Atlantic Ocean. You can see the launch site labeled on the lower left uh, here at Kennedy Space Center. And these, uh, this map uh, labels various abort zones for the Dragon spacecraft. So in the event of any problem during the launch, uh, the eight Super Draco thrusters on the Crew Dragon spacecraft would actually activate and turn on to propel the spacecraft away from the rocket. And it, the spacecraft could splash down in uh, any of these green areas on this map. There is a large green uh, swath of Atlantic Ocean stretching from just off the coast of Kennedy Space Center all the way to uh, off the coast of Newfoundland, where that St. John's abort landing area is labeled. The red area is known as the DAEZ, that's the Dragon Abort Exclusion Zone. Uh, NASA and SpaceX don't want to have the Dragon spacecraft splashing down in that area because it's a very remote, would be hard for rescue forces to reach the crew quickly if they landed in that area. So the Dragon onboard computer actually has the uh, smarts to uh, guide itself 
either back toward the St. John's abort landing area in the event of an abort uh, in that exclusion zone or to give it an extra boost of speed to be able to make a splashdown in the Shannon abort landing area off the coast of Ireland. Stage two, cryohelium loading has started. That call confirms that cryogenic helium is loading, loading into stage two for that pressurant system. Uh, we heard that similar call a few minutes ago for stage one. So this shows the approximate ground track for today's mission, also helpfully shows the abort zones. So any of those places in green is where the, Dr the Crew Dragon spacecraft has the ability to safely abort. And uh, that exclusion zone is where the spacecraft, uh, where the managers don't want the spacecraft to splash down, but the spacecraft actually has the ability, if the abort is going to take them to, to that area, to uh, guide itself either back toward Canada or closer to Europe, uh, closer to shore for a more expedited uh, recovery by search and rescue forces. The drone ship uh, for today's mission is positioned uh, off the coast of the Carolinas, about 340 miles downrange. It's not labeled on this map, but that's where the drone ship is located for recovery of the first stage booster after today's flight. T-minus 24 minutes and 30 seconds and counting. Everything looking good right now for liftoff at noon Eastern time. If you're just joining us for our live coverage, you're just in time to witness the final final few minutes of the SpaceX launch countdown here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. You're looking at a live shot of the Dragon Endurance spacecraft there with the U.S. flag and the NASA worm logo emblazoned on the side. Here's a wider shot of the Falcon 9 rocket with vapors now appearing around the first stage booster. This is a brand new first stage on today's flight. Uh, heading to the International Space Station with a crew of four. Uh, this first stage booster will uh, fly or will boost the uh, vehicle onto a suborbital trajectory. It'll fly just to, to the edge of space, essentially, and then head back for landing on the drone ship uh, downrange in the Atlantic Ocean, while the upper stage of the Falcon 9 and the Dragon spacecraft continue on into orbit, ultimately en route to the International Space Station, where the Dragon and its four occupants are due to arrive at 4.57 p.m. Eastern Time uh, tomorrow. That's about a 29-hour rendezvous sequence for the Dragon spacecraft. This mission is known as Crew-5. It's the fifth operational crew rotation flight by SpaceX under a uh, multi-billion dollar contract with NASA that actually covers 14 flights in total up through 2030. This is the fifth of those 14 Dragon crew rotation missions to the ISS for NASA. Here's a view from the Kennedy Space Center press site. You can see some of the photographers have gathered here uh, near the flagpole and the famous countdown clock to catch a glimpse and to cover today's launch. Again, liftoff is set for noon Eastern time, 21 and a half minutes from now. All the weather parameters here look favorable for launch. As you can see, the winds are uh, light. The skies are partly cloudy. No rain showers or thunderstorm activity anywhere around Central Florida at this point really ideal conditions here at the spaceport for an on-time launch today. Again, this launch was delayed a few days uh, due to uh, Hurricane Ian last week that uh, held up some of the launch preparations. The teams had to secure facilities and uh, stop their work for a couple of days, and that uh, pushed the launch from last week into uh, this week.
The next major event will be what's known as the big vent. It's the uh, plume of oxygen gas we expect to see from the strong back out at pad 39A in a few moments. That's uh, That occurs when the kerosene loading is complete on the second stage of the Falcon 9. T minus 20 minutes and 30 seconds. And there's the big vent from the strong back out at pad 39A. This coincides with the completion of kerosene loading on stage uh, two. Stage two, RP-1 load is complete. And there's the call to confirm that milestone, stage two, RP-1 load complete. RP-1 is known as rocket propellant one. It's a highly refined grade of kerosene uh, used by uh, various types of launch vehicles. It's a storable propellant and has the ability for use in high thrust rocket engines. And with that call out, the next step now underway is chill down of the liquid oxygen transfer line that leads up the strong back out at pad 39A. And the venting you're seeing now coincides with that milestone as well. And that's in preparation for loading of uh, the cryogenic oxidizer onto the second stage of the Falcon 9 beginning in about three minutes or so. All this action on the second stage is occurring while the first stage continues to be loaded with both kerosene and liquid oxygen. Again, the four crew members for today's mission are in their seats on the Dragon spacecraft on top of the Falcon 9 rocket out at Launch Complex 39A here in Florida, 19 minutes away from starting their five-month expedition on the International Space Station. T minus 18 minutes, 15 seconds, no issues reported in the countdown at this time. A quiet audio loop from the launch control center. This mission will mark the uh, 178th flight of a Falcon 9 rocket since June of 2010. And again, it's the eighth Falcon 9 flight to a launch with astronauts on board. It is the 44th Falcon 9 launch of the year by SpaceX. And the third Falcon 9 crew launch by SpaceX so far in 2022. And it's the 43rd space launch attempt from Cape Canaveral or Kennedy Space Center so far this year, extending the record rate of launch activity in 2022. We just saw an Atlas V launch from uh, United Launch Alliance yesterday evening with two commercial communication satellites. Another Falcon 9 rocket is being prepared for launch just a few miles to the south of this pad on Thursday evening with a pair of commercial uh, communication satellites for Intelsat. A very busy launch range here in Florida. Today's focus, of course, is on Crew 5, the next launch of astronauts to the International Space Station to begin their long duration mission. 16 minutes, 40 seconds till liftoff time. The next major milestone will be the start of oxidizer loading on the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. Stage two LOX load has started. And there's the call from launch control right on time. Stage two liquid oxygen loading has started. This is the final propellant tank of the Falcon 9 to be loaded this morning, all in preparation for liftoff just a few seconds before 12.01 p.m. Eastern Time. The launch time exactly is set for 12 o'clock noon and 57 seconds Eastern Time. That's 1,657 UTC, 16 minutes from now. Beautiful morning for a launch here on Florida Space Coast. 
some of the news media uh, and photographers have gathered here at the KSC press site to uh, witness and to cover this launch. You can see some of those gather, some of those uh, individuals individuals gathered here on the press site lawn with the flagpole here and the turn basin waters in the background. Really a gorgeous day for a launch uh, on Florida Space Coast. Weather just as advertised, the weather going into the countdown was forecast to have a better than 90% chance of acceptable conditions for liftoff, and uh, the weather has met that criteria today. 15 minutes, 10 seconds until liftoff. Two minutes, 15 minutes and counting. Two minutes, 12 minutes, 40 seconds, a quiet countdown. Everything looking really good right now for liftoff at 12 p.m. Eastern time of the Crew-5 mission for NASA and SpaceX. just joining us and you haven't done so please hit the like button on our stream we want to get as many people watching our coverage as possible as the countdown for crew five enters the final 10 minutes or actually 12 minutes now 11 and a half minutes till liftoff so please hit the like button here on our youtube stream and uh, help us reach as many people as possible for this launch of four astronauts uh, heading to the iss on a five-month science mission also, if you want to support our coverage, please consider becoming a member of our YouTube channel. We have different membership levels available for you to choose from, and depending on which level you select, you can uh, get access to exclusive bonus video features we have uh, from our coverage here on Florida Space Coast. Some of those features are for members only. 
And if you want to get access to those, consider joining our YouTube channel, and you'll be helping us support our coverage as well in that regard. Also, uh, if you haven't done so, please also consider uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel. That's for free. And uh, if you do that, you'll get alerts when we're going live. You'll never miss a launch if uh, you subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, opt in for alerts. You'll know when we're going live with all of our live streams from here at uh, Kennedy Space Center and at Cape Canaveral. T minus uh, 10 minutes coming up. Dragon, SpaceX, confirm crew displays are configured for launch. Let's go. We would like to give a huge thanks to the NASA and SpaceX team, the thousands of people for their development, preparation, and training in getting Endurance and Crew 5 to the launch pad today, and your continued support in helping to make this a successful mission. We look forward to joining the rest of our Expedition 68 crew members aboard the International Space Station. And a special thanks on behalf of all the crew to our family and friends. It is your love and support that help make dreams come true. Now let's do this. Crew 5 displays are configured for launch. Copy, and Nicole, Josh, Koichi, and Anna, on behalf of the entire team at SpaceX, good luck, Godspeed, and enjoy the ride. That was the call uh, from the SpaceX, SpaceX crew operations responsible engineer at Mission Control in Hawthorne, California, to confirm that the crew displays in the Crew Dragon spacecraft are ready for launch. And Nicole Mann replied with a thank you to all the SpaceX and NASA teams who have helped them get ready for this flight, and a thank you to their families as well. And she confirmed that their crew displays in the Dragon spacecraft are configured for launch. Now eight minutes remaining in the countdown this morning for liftoff of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon Endurance spacecraft. Nicole Mann, Josh Cassida, Koichi Bakata, and Anna Kikina on board the Dragon spacecraft awaiting their ride into orbit from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Stage one engine chill has started. Stage one, RP-1 load is complete.
Now five and a half minutes remaining in the last couple of minutes. We've heard confirmation that chill down conditioning of the Merlin 1D engines on the Falcon 9's first stage has begun. Falcon 9 tanks will be pressurizing for strong back retract. That process thermally conditions those M1D first stage engines for ignition. And we've also had the first stage RP-1 tank is full. So about 46,000 gallons of rocket grade kerosene has been loaded into the Falcon 9. Falcon 9 is now Dragon fully, is in configured for terminal count. fully fueled for launch. Oxidizer loading continues for a couple of more minutes. And we just heard that the Dragon spacecraft is configured for the terminal countdown. Next step will be the retraction of the strongback. And this view, if we continue to have this view, we hope to get a great view of the clamps opening at the top of the upper stage of the Falcon 9, allowing that strongback mass to uh, recline to an angle of about a degree and a half from the Falcon 9. That's where it'll stay for the remainder strongback of the countdown. Strongback retraction has started. And we've heard call out, a call out now that strongback retraction is underway at pad 39A. Four minutes, 20 seconds. See the strong back now in motion. Great view zoomed in here from the vehicle assembly building showing the venting and vapors as Falcon 9 comes alive. The final phase of propellant Stage loading. Stage one, underway. locks load is complete. We just heard that stage one liquid oxygen load is complete. We should hear a similar call in about a minute for stage two. Everything looking good for liftoff at 12 p.m. and 57 seconds Eastern time. Dragon is in terminal count and is on internal power. Dragon, the Dragon Endurance spacecraft is now on internal battery power. minus 2 minutes 30 seconds. T minus two minutes. T minus one minute, 50 seconds. Dragon is in auto idle. Stage two locks load is complete. Falcon nine is now fully loaded with about a million pounds of propellant. The entire vehicle yeah, weighs about 1.2 million pounds. Landing. T minus 90 seconds. FTS is armed, Falcon 9 is in startup and is now controlling. Dragon is in countdown. T minus 45 seconds. Dragon, SpaceX. Godspeed, go for launch. SpaceX Dragon, go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. T 
minus 15, minus 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Engine's full power. And lift off. Go crew five. Stage one alpha. Copy one alpha. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Nominal power and telemetry. Stage one throttle down. T plus one minute. Wonderful views coming from a rocket cam on the Falcon 9 looking back down toward uh, Kennedy Space Center now as the Falcon 9 heads northeast from Kennedy Space Center. Stage one throttle up. Running the power of nine Merlin 1D engines. Stage one Bravo. Beautiful Copy. shot one here Bravo. showing Falcon 9 with its contrail behind it going supersonic now. It surpassed the speed of sound. Burning kerosene and liquid oxygen. Those nine engines continuing to do their work. That distinctive uh, plume from those uh, Engines mounted on the Octoweb on the first stage booster. T plus one minute, 50 seconds. Wonderful start to crew five so far. T plus two minutes, about 30 seconds away from main engine cutoff. You can see the famous outline of Cape Canaveral there in the background. And a beautiful day in here in central Florida. T plus two minutes and 14 seconds, about 15 seconds remaining until main engine cutoff. Stage one throttle down. There's main engine cutoff. Stand and Miko. For Stage two alpha. Stage separation confirmed. Copy two alpha. Impact ignition. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. Dragon, SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Dragon copy. Now four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight, you've been hearing these periodic call-outs between launch control or mission control and the Crew Dragon spacecraft where Commander Nicole Mann has been calling out uh, different abort boundaries as the Falcon 9 uh, passes through different phases of its flight. 
As I mentioned a few moments ago, we've had a good staging of the first stage booster, which you now see from an onboard camera heading toward the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. The second stage is firing its uh, Merlin vacuum Dragon engine now. Dragon trajectory nominal. Dragon copies. That call confirms Dragon and Falcon 9 are on a nominal trajectory about halfway through this uh, upper stage engine burn. Plus five minutes, 30 seconds. Dragon Endurance is now at an altitude of 198 kilometers. It's about 120 miles. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Dragon copy. Position of signal, AFSCN. plus six minutes, 40 seconds, while the upper stage continues to fire to propel the Crew Dragon Endurance capsule into orbit. Uh, we're going to see in the next few moments the entry burn by the first stage booster, which Dragon will be... SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Dragon copy. That first stage booster will reignite three of its engines to begin slowing down for reentry and landing on the drone ship. This mission is targeting and landing on the drone ship. Just read the instructions, about 340 miles downrange uh, from the launch site. Seven minutes, 20 seconds since launch. The upper stage with Dragon is passing 17,000 kilometers per hour at this point. Stage two, FTS is saved. There's the entry burn underway on the first stage booster. Three engines firing to slow it down for reentry. Entry burn is complete at T plus eight minutes. The booster will reignite its uh, center engine in the final seconds before landing to uh, do its final braking maneuver before touchdown. And the booster will also extend four landing legs just before it arrives on the deck of the drone ship. On the right, though, stage two is, in terminal guidance. is the second stage Merlin vacuum engine bell glowing red hot as normal. Eight and a half minutes since launch. About 10 seconds Cannon. remaining. 10 seconds Copy remaining Cannon. in the upper stage burn. And impact shutdown. And shutdown of the upper stage engine has been confirmed. Dragon SpaceX nominal orbit insertion. Dragon copy. We're watching the landing of the first stage booster now on the drone ship. Just read the instructions. Launch escape system disarmed. Beautiful shot of the shadow of that booster on the deck of the drone ship. And there's landing booster 1077 on the deck of just read the instructions about 340 miles 
northeast of Kennedy Space Center. This completes the first flight to space for this booster. Back on Earth for another launch, uh, perhaps numerous launches in the future for this booster. This map shows the location of Stage 1 on the drone ship, Stage 2 and Dragon, now coasting in orbit. A nominal orbit insertion has been confirmed from SpaceX. About two minutes until Dragon uh, separates from the Falcon 9 rocket. Now less than 30 seconds remaining until deployment of the Dragon spacecraft from the Falcon 9's upper stage. The vehicles are now flying off the coast of the eastern United States. They'll soon be passing east of the Canadian Maritime Provinces. Standing by for Dragon separation. Dragon separation confirmed. This view from the Falcon 9's confirmed. upper stage shows the Dragon spacecraft flying away from the rocket against the blackness of space. You can and see Dragon, in there. this is your launch director. Dragon copies and. And Dragon, this is your launch director on Dragon on behalf of the entire launch and recovery team. It was an honor and a pleasure to be a part of this mission with you. And while October 3rd may belong to the Mean Girls, October 5th will forever belong to Crew 5. Godspeed, Endurance. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you so much to the Falcon team. Woo! That was a smooth ride up here. we got three rookies that are pretty happy to be floating in space right now and one uh, veteran astronaut who's pretty happy to be back as well. Let's see what you got to say, Koichi. Uh, Falcon team, uh, you know, it was a smooth ride, and uh, I see all the three happy faces here it's back in zero G, and I appreciate all the help to give us this smooth ride and training, and thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Anya. Uh, thank you, Falcon 9 and uh, uh, for our uh, agency, to, to Ross Cosmos, NASA, and JAXA, and SpaceX exactly for uh, giving us that opportunity. We're so glad to do it together. And uh, thank you for everybody, for all people who are with us. Спасибо большое всем агентствам Ross Cosmos, NASA, JAXA, и, естественно, SpaceX за предоставленную нам возможность. Мы рады всем экипажам делать то, что мы сейчас делаем. И большое спасибо всем людям, кто сейчас с нами. And Dragon Falcon 9 see you. Thanks for the words. Uh, had a great ride. Have a good mission. We'll see you later.
Nominal dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. Expected loss of signal, New Hampshire. Copy. Plus 15 minutes, 40 seconds, we heard some very nice uh, audio exchanges from the crew on board the Dragon Endurance spacecraft and the launch director here at Kennedy Space Center, who congratulated them on a successful launch into orbit. Nicole Mann said there are three spaceflight rookies with big smiles on their faces, talking about herself, uh, her pilot, Josh Cassida, and the Russian cosmonaut, Anna Kikina. We also heard some words from uh, Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata, who is the sole veteran uh, going into this flight. They're all veterans of space flight now. But uh, Koichi Wakata uh, also thanked uh, SpaceX for the smooth, smooth ride into orbit today. He is on his fifth mission to space. The Crew Dragon Endurance is now soaring uh, more than 120 miles over the North Atlantic Ocean, flying free of the Falcon 9 upper stage. The next major event we hope to confirm in the next couple of minutes will be the opening of the nose cone on the Dragon spacecraft. Expected loss of signal, New Finland. Acquisition of signal, Good Hilly. Acquisition of signal, line. We're seeing now the nose cone on the forward end of the Dragon Endurance spacecraft begin to open. This nose cone covers the docking mechanism as well as some of the navigation sensors on the Dragon spacecraft to protect them during launch and reentry. The six hooks uh, have opened to allow that uh, nose cone to begin unfold into its orbital on orbit position revealing the Dragon docking mechanism for tomorrow's link up with the International Space Station. We're seeing a split screen view right now. On the left, uh, still a camera feeding video from the Falcon 9's upper stage. 
which has now deployed the Dragon spacecraft. That upper stage engine will, engine will relight shortly for uh, a deorbit burn. We saw just then a glimpse from a different camera on the stage two of the Falcon 9 rocket showing the Dragon spacecraft off in the distance. On the right is a camera on Dragon itself showing that nose cone opening. NASA confirms that there's been a good checkout of the service section Draco thrusters. These are the thrusters used for a lot of the in-orbit maneuvers of the Dragon spacecraft. We saw some of those thrusters firing moments after separation. Dragon, we see a nominal nose cone opening, TCS and forward bulkhead Draco checkouts. Can copy. Next burn is a the upcoming phase burn per your displays. We see the phase burn in 28 minutes. Good readback. Now 23 minutes, 18 seconds since the launch of the Crew-5 mission from here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. You're watching views from inside the Dragon Endurance spacecraft where the crew members have opened their helmet visors and are getting acclimated to the weightless environment of space. Dragon, SpaceX, environments are looking good for suit doffing. For today, we can leave the uh, camera configured for a little while longer, but at this time, you are go for 4.012 and 4.300. As a reminder, please stow the suits with the visors closed. I'll copy. Hey, Dragon copies. We are go for 4.012 and 4.300. We're going to keep the cameras configured, and when we suits, we'll do it. Good read back. At this time, you're also go to tell the world a little bit about that stowaway we saw shortly after second engine cutoff.
expected loss of signal. Ground, we missed the last part of your transmission. And no worries, repeating my last one there. I was going to uh, have you all talk a little bit about your zero G indicator, uh, but we can hold that off for the next uh, ground station pass here for Dubai. Uh, at this time, what I'll do is I'll take the cameras external for suit doffing, and then uh, you let me know when we're allowed to come back on board. Dragging copies, so we'll let you know when you come back on with the cameras and we'll talk about our Okay, you're dragging copies and working. plus 26 minutes, so you've heard some uh, more radio transmissions between SpaceX Mission Control out in Hawthorne, California, which you're looking at live in this view at the SpaceX headquarters, and the crew on board the Dragon spacecraft who have now uh, been in orbit for about 17 minutes or so since they were, uh, since they arrived in orbit following the launch 26 minutes ago from Kennedy Space Center. Cameras are external. The crew members are now uh, have been given the go to doff or remove their spacesuits and to get into some more comfortable clothing uh, for this 29-hour transit to the International Space Station. Again, culminating in an automated docking that is scheduled for 4:57 p.m. Eastern Time or 20:57 UTC tomorrow on Thursday, October the 6th. This is actually the longest uh, rendezvous profile that a Dragon spacecraft has uh, flown to date uh, on the missions to the space station, on a crew mission at least. Most of these uh, rendezvous have been less than 24 hours. This is a 29-hour rendezvous just uh, necessitated by the position of the space station in its orbit at the time of launch. So just to recap, uh, after the suc successful launch uh, at noon Eastern time, we saw a good orbital injection and, and deployment of the Dragon spacecraft right on the mark in orbit. We saw a successful landing of the booster, the Falcon 9 booster 1077 uh, successfully touched down on the drone ship offshore in the Atlantic Ocean, ready for its return to port for uh, refurbishment and reuse. And uh, NASA and SpaceX officials confirmed the opening of the nose cone, revealing the docking mechanism. That's a critical milestone that's uh, required before the Dragon spacecraft can approach the space station. Ground for cameras. Go ahead for cameras. Could we get our ground pass back? You can feel free to come on board with the cameras. We're going to stay in our suits here until we're done checking. SpaceX copies. Just paused our update there to listen in on that radio traffic between SpaceX Mission Control and the Dragon Endurance crew, now in orbit. After the opening of the nose cone, we were also able to confirm uh, from NASA and SpaceX that the Dragon Draco thrusters, uh, both the aft and forward thrusters, completed their checkouts. And Dragon SpaceX for waistband. Okay, Josh, not sure if you all have released your restraints and moved out of the cabin at, at this point in time, but if you are, we did notice that the waste fan had been uh, left on and running through the ascent period, and so we were hoping that you could power that one off for us, knowing that you'll uh, probably be using that again shortly. I'll copy. Dragon copies, and uh, only Koichi out of his seat right now, so we'll have him go and uh, and turn it off. Copy that. Thank you.
and SpaceX for Koichi. We are requesting that you unlatch the waste fan button near location 21. I'll copy. Six Dragon copies. That's currently in work. Acquisition of signal, Dubai. And Dragon, cameras are internal. SpaceX. Dragon copies, we are internal. We see wave fans off and stand by for the cabin mic check. SpaceX Dragon from the cabin mic, come check. And Koichi, I've got you 5x5, five five. how me? Mike, we have you loud and clear also. Great news, and we're also getting some great views inside the capsule here, so if you all want to get a chance to talk about your indicator, we'd all love to hear some. Absolutely, Mike. So, uh, a couple of years after he come up with his groundbreaking theory of special relativity, Albert Einstein, in his mind, still had a couple of loose ends to tie up. While he was sitting in the patent office, because he wasn't famous yet, definitely should have been, he had what his happiest thought of his entire life. That thought was person in free fall doesn't feel their own weight. That thought, along with some others that he built upon, led to general relativity and our understanding of gravitation and curvature of space time. We're experiencing Einstein's happiest thought continuously, like the International Space Station has been doing for over 20 years. On crew five, call this little guy our free fall indicator. We're here to tell you there's plenty of gravity up here. In fact, that's what's keeping us in orbit right now and preventing this trip on a crew dragon from being a one way trip. A little bit like life. We live in the same world, we live in the same universe. Sometimes we experience it in a very different way from our neighbors. We can all keep that in mind. We can all continue to do absolutely amazing things. Do it together. Well, that was excellent, Josh. We appreciate you all taking the chance to share with us some of those special words and some of the meaning to you all. I'll tell you, my crewmates are just happy that uh, we didn't break out a dry erase board and get into more detail. We'll chat lensing later. Absolutely. Okay, at this time, I will also note that upcoming phase burn, and now that we have uh, worked through the uh, on-orbit demonstration of your freefall indicator, uh, we would like to take the cameras external as you work through 4.012. How copy? Great to us, Mike. Uh, we're getting into 4.012, and you're going external on the cameras. Thank you.
Good read back. Expected loss of signal, Dubai. Resolution of signal, Maldives.
Now, 42 minutes since the launch of NASA's Crew-5 mission. You're looking at a live view inside SpaceX Mission Control in Hawthorne, California, near Los Angeles, where engineers are on station right now monitoring various systems on board the Dragon Endurance spacecraft as it begins its flight to the International Space Station. This is a 29-hour flight from launch until docking. Docking at the space station is set for 5 p.m. Eastern time, or 20... 100 UTC approximately tomorrow is when the Crew Dragon spacecraft will complete its automated docking at the space station to deliver these uh, four new crew members to the ISS. They'll replace uh, the four outgoing members of the Crew 4 mission who are due to return to Earth later this month. Here's a replay of the uh, launch of the Falcon 9 rocket, again, 43 minutes ago from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Great view of the Falcon 9 uh, vaulting off of pad 39A, 1.7 million pounds of thrust there, powering the launch vehicle into the sky. A beautiful day for a rocket launch here on Florida Space Coast to begin the Crew-5 mission to the space station. Again, this is part of a crew rotation or change out on the ISS, replacing the crew four astronauts who have been up there since April. This crew five mission is uh, the fifth operational crew rotation flight to the space station by SpaceX. If you're interested in purchasing the crew five mission patch, you can go to our store at shop.spaceflightnow.com. We have the crew five mission patch available for purchase there and uh, your shopping on our Space Flight Now store helps us continue to uh, provide our live launch coverage and other uh, news coverage on our website on spaceflightnow.com. So if you're interested in purchasing the Crew 5 patch to commemorate today's launch, go to our Space Flight Now store at shop.spaceflightnow.com. You can also support our coverage uh, by becoming a member and joining our YouTube channel. We have different uh, membership levels for you to choose from, depending on which level you choose. You can gain access to exclusive members-only uh, video features uh, on our YouTube channel. So please consider becoming a member of Space Flight Now's YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you subscribe, you'll get alerts when we're going live with our launch coverage. You'll never miss a launch if you're uh, subscribed to our uh, YouTube channel. And uh, we'll be back, obviously, tomorrow with another launch of a Falcon 9 rocket uh, scheduled uh, from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station tomorrow evening at 7.07 uh, .07 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll be here covering the launch of a Falcon 9 with the Galaxy 33 and Galaxy 34 television broadcasting satellites for Intelsat. These are two uh, commercial communication satellites that are set to launch off of Pad 40 from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Uh, before that, uh, we'll be covering the launch on our website on spaceflightnow.com of another Falcon 9 rocket from out at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. That launch is scheduled this evening, uh, less than six, less than seven hours away now, at 7:10 p.m. Eastern Time, or 4:10 p.m. Pacific, or 23:10 UTC, carrying the next batch of 52 Starlink Internet satellites into orbit to join SpaceX's broadband. Uh, internet network. So two more Falcon 9s left to fly over the next uh, 30 hours or so uh, from the company's two other active launch pads, one in California and one here in Florida. A very busy week for SpaceX and the U.S. launch industry. Uh, that busy week will continue on Friday with Rocket Lab, which is planning to launch an Electron rocket from down in New Zealand. This is a U.S a small satellite launch company, but they launch out of New Zealand with a uh, commercial U.S. satellite for a company called General Atomics. This is the Gazelle satellite, which will launch on a mission to uh, relay weather buoy data uh, from uh, distributed networks of weather monitoring stations around the world to uh, forecast centers. Also, we'll be relaying data from uh, other uh, distributed networks, such as uh, networks that track the uh, movement of uh, wildlife, for example. This is a data relay satellite that uh, has multi multiple uses, uh, both for commercial and government users. Also has a search and rescue support capability. 
And then uh, next week, uh, a Russian Soyuz rocket is scheduled to launch from the Plesetsk Cosmodrome with uh, a GLONASS navigation satellite. The GLONASS network is Russia's equivalent to the GPS network. That launch is scheduled for October the 10th, according to uh, airspace uh, warning notices and uh, notices to pilots that have been released associated with that launch from Russia. So those are the next uh, few launches that we have on our calendar right now. Later this month, there are additional SpaceX missions on tap uh, from here on Florida Space Coast with more Starlink satellites, more uh, commercial communication satellites as well. We'll be covering all of those live on our YouTube channel. And you can go to our Space Flight Now launch schedule for a full Welcome listing. Welcome to Mission Control Houston. I'm NASA Shaniqua Vereen, and we are live in the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Just about 50 minutes ago, so with that, we uh, we're going to leave you with one last look of Launch Complex 39A, where the, the Falcon 9 Space rocket and Crew Dragon the Endurance Space spacecraft launch launched nearly 48 a minutes ago Cape Canaveral, at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, or 1600 UTC, to crew begin this flight with a crew of four to heading to the International Space Station. Crew Everything going right uh, by the book right now, according to SpaceX. No issues reported during the countdown or the launch sequence. It's a smooth start to the Crew 5 mission, which again is due to last about five months on the ISS. So until next time, we're going to sign off from our live commentary. We'll uh, continue Nicole streaming Mann, live views of uh, Pad 39A, Josh Cassida, where uh, SpaceX will be uh, shortly, later, th later today, probably lowering that strong back to a horizontal position. Uh, for the eventual return to the hangar to pick up the next Falcon rocket that will launch from this Space launch facility. Including the crew we'll also be tracking and monitoring progress NASA's with the Starship Lingard, launch site construction Bob out of Pad 39A. We can follow that and the current uh, station on our YouTube channel. Space we'll be streaming that continuously. And again, the they next launch we'll be covering on YouTube is tomorrow evening at 7.07 p.m. Eastern Time, or 23.07 UTC, when uh, SpaceX is set to launch another Falcon 9 Sir, rocket from Sergei Pad 40 Prokofiev down at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. That should be a spectacular launch. To the, uh, the weather station. forecast Abora looks Soyuz really spacecraft. ideal, similar conditions as we with saw today, five, with we'll mostly clear skies, uh, light winds, for a short period of time. and a better than 90% chance of good weather for that launch tomorrow evening right around sunset, so it could be a beautiful Early twilight launch from Florida crafts. Space Coast. We, we will hope you will join us live Including for SpaceX our coverage of that Freedom, mission. Which brought up the crew for astronauts. So I'm Stephen Clark. I've been reporting live on the Crew 5 launch here at NASA's Harvest Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We'll see you next time. Ships. Crew 5 is not the only thing headed to station. That's right, we have critical science and investigations headed up with the crew.